start. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, I will be talking about uh, Network Manager and uh, Network Management in Linux systems in general. Uh, first, I would like to start with uh, sort of a big picture or looking, looking at things from the far distance. Uh, what you can use, what's, what's possible, what's not possible. Uh, and we'll start with the kernel features, uh, as uh, the Linux kernel does uh, quite a lot of auto-configuration for you. Uh, this is uh, sort of uh, special for Linux. Uh, for example, BSDs are less, uh, less uh, auto-configuring. Uh, first, you have the basics. So if, if you just uh, turn your Lubeck interface up, you are immediately getting two IP addresses. Uh, one is IPv4 127.001. The second is uh, IPv6. So this is this is uh, the simplest case of uh, automatic configuration of addresses. And on top of that, uh, you have uh, link local addresses in kernel today, uh, but uh, these are only implemented for IPv6, which is uh, not a big deal because uh, it's uh, just link local, so you don't need any connectivity for that. And I think it's it's not worth uh, even considering IPv4 link local now. It's uh, it's uh, just uh, too late to work with that. Uh, but then you have uh, uh, the auto configuration of global addresses, which is sort of uh, more difficult, more uh, collab more collaboration with uh, other things on the network. But still, you can get uh, public addresses by just receiving router advertisements and uh, the kernel configures the whole stuff. When it configures your uh, public addresses, it, it can also configure a uh, default route, it can configure uh, the device routes, which are sort of uh, usually viewed as parts of the addresses. Uh, if anybody uh, does know, uh, the device routes are what you get by using your IP address and that mask or prefix, prefix land. And uh, what is uh, somewhat um, usually forgotten is uh, that the kernel can do uh, the removal of the addresses. So when their lifetime is over, which is usually done for the global ones, uh, the kernel actually removes the addresses. This is a very important feature that I will be talking about again uh, with uh, regard to other ways to configure addresses. Uh, but now uh, let's continue with the kernel. The kernel uh, allows you to use uh, Netlink API, which uh, you can uh, without problem use from C programs using Libanel library. It's, uh, it's actually quite easy. And uh, uh, that way you can, you can tell the kernel to configure just uh, anything regarding uh, networking, like addresses, uh, link options, and routes. Uh, some things are not done via netlink. Uh, these are usually simple uh, values, simple options that you can do with syscontrol or directly with the process files. And uh, the kernel also provides uh, recursive DNS server list and DNS search list. These are stuff uh, usually put to etc resolve.conf. Uh, but this is, uh, this is currently pretty lame. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't work as we expect. And I'll be talking about it later. Uh, there are various, uh, like I say, APIs, usually some IO controls or stuff like that. Various tools use these old APIs APIs, uh, there are sometimes problems that uh, using the old APIs you get different behavior. So if, if you do some first tests, it's best to use the, the current tools. And especially you can use uh, the IP route package and the IP command which directly uses Netlink. It's the simplest way to test. There are things that uh, you, ca you can't do with your kernels. This is uh, all sorts of stateful configuration, which is usually DHCP. Doesn't matter whether it's for IPv4 or IPv6. And uh, you cannot uh, do properly uh, 
this configuration via kernel uh, because kernel does not usually edit uh, your files. And currently in Linux, uh, you don't store the configuration of DNS uh, in the memory, but uh, in the etc resolve conf file. So this is pretty important that you have some daemon that listens to the kernel and sets up this, this information. Uh, what next you need uh, for, for many things are some sorts of auxiliary scripts, like, for example, uh, when you receive a, a list of NTP servers over DHCP, you want to run a script to tell the NTP uh, daemon, the NTP client daemon, uh, to use the exact list of server, uh, servers you received. But very often, uh, just uh, plain DHCP clients or the software you us usually call DHCP clients does all of this. So they are used uh, as configuration daemons. They are not only doing the, the queries over the network, but they also configure stuff. They also call the auxiliary scripts, as I was I was talking about. So uh, currently, you can you can be perfectly okay with uh, IPv4 if you have just uh, one interface or with some, some special configuration, you can also uh, do some prioritizing. And if you know resolve conf tool or net config on SUSE or stuff like that. Uh, so these tools usually use uh, Netlink for kernel configuration. So they can do just uh, the same stuff you are doing with uh, the IP command. And the simplest way is, is uh, to, to do DNS is via etc of conf. So uh, things that um, either don't work or can't easily be done automatically are if you have multiple interfaces, because you first have uh, conflicts regarding uh, the default route. You can have conflicts regarding uh, uh, the device routes because you can have uh, two interfaces connected to the same network, so you are receiving exactly the same routes and uh, sometimes uh, kernel then stops uh, sending any packets at all or it randomly sends some packets uh, through one, one interface, some through the second interface. Uh, it, it's pretty wrong then. And uh, uh, you would usually like to have some uh, policy decisions by default made according to some un unwritten rules that, yes, I want to use um, the wired interface because wireless is usually not the better one. Uh, but you also want to uh, do the policy decisions yourself or at least give some hints to the system to, to do these decisions for you. And if, if you try to do this with the HCP, you can have problems with, with uh, integrating to VPNs, with integrating to other tools. For example, there's a big problem with uh, uh, the setup that you want to uh, resolve uh, various names through different name service, uh, name service. Uh, for example, when you connect to a company VPN, you want all company addresses to be resolved through the company VPN, but you might be wanting to uh, use your network's name service for uh, all other stuff. So this is not, not uh, possible to do via ResolveConf currently, uh, but it's possible to do with, uh, for example, DNS mask name server, or uh, yesterday I, I heard Un Unbound also supports it. So let's do go to the current real world how things are done or how things can be done. Uh, it's uh, quite easy to set up uh, some uh, static network uh, configuration just with IP out commands. You can put it into a script so you can run it uh, during the boot. No problem with that. You can, uh, can tweak all sorts of stuff that you know in advance. It is, uh, sort of possible to do some dynamic stuff if you if you use, uh, for example, UDEV to start your scripts. It's, it's possible to do some magic with it. But it's, um, 
not so easy and uh, not so not so nice. So what uh, currently most uh, distributions use for servers is uh, scripts, network scripts usually usually called, uh, or you can have specific names in, in various distributions. And these use uh, per interface configuration files. So they usually can do uh, stuff like uh, setting one interface up with all the configuration. Uh, it doesn't work well at all times. So far, I think, uh, yeah, you see, you see the Fedora theme. So <coughs> I'm mostly, mostly uh, in the Fedora project. But so far, I can say that uh, Debian network scripts seem to be the most flexible and versatile of, of all solutions on this level. So I don't want to uh, repeat myself, but uh, the biggest problems are when you want to do uh, DHCP on several interfaces, or even when you want to do uh, IPv6 just auto configuration with DNS and DHCP for IPv4 at the same time, uh, you're, you're getting all sorts of, of these problems. Yeah, well, one, of, one of the biggest uh, thing is that uh, regardless if, if you're using IPv4 or IPv6, the DNS configuration is shared. So currently, uh, like I said, the if up down thing was pretty pretty neat to to use uh, for all the time, but let's go forward. What I want to show you that uh, that we should not afraid of using uh, network configuration demons. You see, I have no screenshots, no UI stuff in this presentation, so I'm really all the time speaking about the backend. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, what what we need in Linux distributions is to have some something that is uh, universal. Yes, there are exceptions. There are embedded devices uh, for routers. There are stuff that that maybe we can't cover with the same software. But uh, I still think that uh, the, the desktop use cases, laptop use cases, uh, server use cases, and virtualization use cases should be solved with, with the same stuff. And actually, uh, I'm working remote, and when I went home and wanted to start to work, what I needed for that? Uh, I needed to use virtualization on my laptop, connected sometimes through wired, sometimes through Wi-Fi, sometimes to other networks, so all, all the dyna dynamic stuff. And also, at the same time, I wanted to use a VPN so this, these are all, all the stuff I did not do inside the company because there was just one wired connection and I just turned off network manager and worked, worked easily. Uh, but when I came home, I spent uh, one week uh, hacking and then I could do all of this. So it was really not, not so hard. And, um, Finally, I could use uh, the one single daemon with some modifications uh, to read configuration files that, uh, that I wrote by hand or configured via uh, some GUI if, if I care to do so. Uh, it did some policy decisions, not perfect, but it, it did something. and. I did all, all the communication with the kernel, all the settings, so no other daemon was required to, to do that. And the VPN was integrated to Network Manager, so there was no problem. There was uh, OpenVPN, there are a bunch of others. So it, it sort of worked for me after some time. And what uh, we are going to do is uh, to make Network Manager good at exactly this stuff to make it usable and provide you with, with the services you need. So what, what are the pros? Uh, multiple managed interfaces without problem. Uh, what we want to have, uh, uh, we 
you can you can see that I, I I'm very careful not to say we have that everything working uh, is to manage multiple interfaces in a very dynamic way so that uh, in a, at, at any time I can choose to switch to another interface but have them both configured and only the default routing and DNS stuff will be switched uh, very very easily then uh, static and dynamic you know you can still do all static configuration with uh, tools in this category and the most important thing that that in the future we really, really want to uh, allow you to step into policy decisions and everything is event based so everything is dynamic and works works <laughs> according to the current situation There is not just one implementation of, of a full-fledged uh, network daemon. Uh, there are like uh, six at a time, six that are sort of uh, at least a little bit active. There's network manager, I will be talk talking later about more. And uh, Konman from Intel, uh, part of the Miko project. I've seen some commits, so it's... it's uh, not really that at the time, uh, but uh, I tried to work with Conman. I tried to work with uh, WICD. I did not try this uh, this tool, and I was uh, uh, having a long talk with uh, people who made uh, Wicked from OpenSUSE. And still, I can I can say that Network Manager, even though it's not perfect. Uh, it's uh, currently on the best way. So uh, I would like to invite anyone uh, from the other projects to talk with, that, with us. Maybe we can share something, maybe we can, we can uh, uh, consolidate and work more together, uh, whatever is possible. <coughs> so now to the current status of uh, Network Manager and the current development. Uh, we are currently uh, at the stable, bra stable branch or stable version uh, 196, which is uh, the first version I at least a little bit believe in support for, uh, for basic IPv6. And we have the, a development branch, or you just can call it master because it's, uh, it's just to have some version number. And, uh, it's actually getting better and better because uh, the current development branch has lots of uh, lots of new stuff uh, included, and I'll be still talking about it. So, uh, what do we have now? We have a long history of laptop and desktop usage, so we are pretty good in wireless stuff and and uh, such things. Uh, I say we are. I, I'm really not. Uh, but then Williams uh, made a good work on that. And uh, we are trying to expand to server and virtualization world, which is uh, sort of new for the project. It's uh, not so new um, to me in person. So I actually joined Network Manager team uh, exactly because it was going to move to, to the server, uh, server world. Uh, currently, we have uh, four regulars, uh, but we have uh, quite a good number of uh, occasional contributors, and we have some people that contribute really often, uh, especially they are working on stuff that, that we ne never get to, that we never have time to do. Uh, so uh, they, they help uh, the project f from our priorities and stuff. Uh, we often contribute, uh, by we I mean, I mean the, the four regulars, uh, we contribute to other projects related to networking, so currently I think Dan Williams uh, mostly contributes to the kernel, uh, I am currently trying to con contribute to glibc which we don't directly use but uh, we often get some, uh, some bugs that uh, end up being just glibc. 
and we are trying to work more with other people in the ecosystem. And that's, uh, that's what makes uh, even those of you that uh, don't want to use Network Manager or never will actually use Network Manager, you still get some pieces of our work because uh, if, if you are using a dynamic tool uh, to configure stuff, it's much different from using just the static tools. You find bugs that you, you wouldn't find otherwise. Uh, f just, just as a small example, uh, if you're using wireless networking and uh, you perform a scanning and the driver lets the network down when scanning, that's a problem that you will see in Network Manager very quickly because it, it uh, performs the scanning quite often to present you the list of the networks. So let's uh, move to uh, the actual usage of network manager in distributions because this is quite uh, an interesting part as uh, for some reason or other uh, the project uh, decided to support various uh, types of configuration files. So for example in Fedora which is like a mother distribution for network manager uh, we are not even using uh, the, the internal structure of uh, Network Manager for a configuration or the default configuration format. We are using the classic uh, Red Hat format, uh, sometimes called ifconfig, sometimes ifcfg. Uh, and we are trying to always, always cope with it so, so that uh, we work as close as possible to the original network scripts, which doesn't mean it works perfectly, but it's uh, it's um, quite a good level of, of integration. We have some issues with uh, system D and D bus, uh, especially we got we got often uh, auto activated using D bus. So it might happen to you that uh, that you started network or that you have network manager started by default. You wanted to stop it to do some testing, and actually, when you when you started testing without network manager in several seconds or such, uh, you got it back back up and running, which is very bad. I was trying to get rid of this behavior, and uh, it somehow disappears in our uh, Fedora 17 builds, and somehow re appeared in Fedora 18. So it's it's just crazy. Currently, we have also some problems with co cooperation with the network scripts because the current network manager only identifies uh, the devices by their MAC addresses, while the network scripts can also do uh, name-based matching. And we are really trying to have things uh, working for the users, so uh, with help of other people. I don't know if uh, Martin Holetz is somewhere here. Uh, we have uh, networking test weeks in Fedora and for Fedora 18 this was the <coughs> first one. It was it was uh, three days uh, dedicated to uh, testing uh, networking stuff, not only network manager. Uh, we plan to have another for Fedora 19 and that's uh, probably all related to Fedora. Uh, for Debian, we are supporting uh, if up down style configuration, but um, that's sort of sort of uh, difficult. As um, actually, the fo the four of us, the regulars, uh, don't really care much about if up down. So if there's some problem and it's trivial, we are happy to fix it. Uh, if Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So cu currently, with Af if up down, um, I think uh, the network manager team itself will not uh, fix the, the worse issues or the more complicated ones. Uh, if anyone comes and, and helps us, uh, it's possible. But um, actually, the, the 
Debian system is, is so flexible that I'm not sure if we can properly support it at all. So this is this is uh, you are talking about uh, unstable or yeah yeah I don't remember the names very well uh, okay I'll, I'll just uh, yeah just 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 repeat for all, all the people so as I was saying uh, in Debian in Wheezy um, in Squeeze already if up down style config configuration is supported but disabled by default because it doesn't work so well. And for for Wheezy, uh, new installs do switch to Network Manager's native configuration. Uh, it's done by the installer, which will generate uh, that instead of if up down if you are installing a desktop system with Network Manager. Thank you. Uh, so for the long term, it may also it may even happen that uh, we actually drop this support if if it's not used at all. I recommended something that's already done. It's 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 so funny. Yeah. Um, uh, what about SUSE? Uh, we receive occasional contributions from SUSE. Otherwise, uh, some SUSE folks were working on Wicked, which is an alternative. Uh, I was talking with them uh, in Prague uh, at Open SUSE conference. Uh, that was together with uh, Linux days, but I haven't heard from them uh, since then, so I just can't tell you more information because I don't have them. Uh, we still support DNS setting through uh, SUSE netconfig, but all other uh, scripting stuff, all other integration uh, is uh, to be done via uh, via dispatcher scripts, which are network managers uh, implementation for auxiliary scripting on some events. Uh, there are some minor issues. Uh, usually the SUSE folks uh, patch network manager to, to work perfectly for them. And we, time by time, we go and pick up some of the patches that we like. What's uh, very interesting, uh, we still support uh, configuration files for uh, Gentoo. I don't know uh, whether Gentoo folks use the native ones or, or the, the Fnet configuration. Uh, but uh, what's uh, quite interesting is that uh, integration with OpenRC is um, really, really good. They have uh, network manager service uh, starting uh, like uh, I, I don't remember, maybe someone helps me, disabled or unavailable or something like that. And uh, they wait for Network Manager to, to mark uh, its own service uh, running. That means we have actual connectivity. Uh, it's, it's actually not so perfect from the Network Manager side because we still uh, don't properly uh, uh, distinguish between various connected states like we have just link local addresses, we have global addresses and, and such. But from, from the OpenRC side, it's, uh, it's something I really like. And uh, because it's very quick to, to test some uh, f quick fixes and stuff on Gen2, I'm quite often using it for uh, testing. And now we got uh, live e-build, that means e-build from the Git repository uh, that that uh, makes it easy to install the, the most current network manager or even uh, if you just change the name of the branch you can you can get any branch that you are working on so this is this is really uh, really easy for me and finally <coughs> I I have to test in Fedora but uh, usually the first test I'm, I'm doing on Gentoo 
what's uh, quite new and what's uh, not yet delivered um, as a stable release is uh, that uh, we can build without special configure options, which is normal in the open source world. Uh, but previously, you would have to do uh, minus minus with minus distro. Uh, and you would have to choose from like 13 distributions that were al already supported. And we cleaned this up. Uh, we re realized that only like uh, five uh, no, four, four distributions really need, used something special. And these were usually uh, just the configuration formats. And only one distribution had some, some real conditional code, which was SUSE because of netconfig. And that's, that's just, a, just a small uh, small piece of code. So now you can, uh, you can turn on and off these features uh, just uh, by configure options. And uh, it's still the same by default, so it, sh it should behave the same as in previous versions if you don't change the configure options. So now to the features. Not all features I'll be talking about are already released. Not all features are already uh, coded, but I'll, I'll tell you uh, for the individual ones. Uh, these are just uh, a recapitulation of uh, what, uh, what uh, types of interfaces we support. Uh, currently, we support uh, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, uh, ADSL, mobile broadband, uh, Bluetooth, uh, some OLPC stuff I, I know nothing about, uh, WiMAX, and InfiniBand. So these are the physical, physical type of interfaces. Uh, that means we, for example, uh, currently don't support the classic dial-up networking, which uh, we did in, in previous versions. Uh, but uh, nobody was interested enough to uh, to add the support back. USB, uh, USB usually gives you some uh, Ethernet device or something. So yes, yes, it's possible. And we have uh, currently some uh, some uh, uh, visual types of interfaces. Uh, these are VLANs, which uh, worked for me f in some quick testing. Uh, these are uh, bridges and bonds. Uh, actually, we already supported bonding, but it n never worked for me. So I'm rather uh, talking about it as, as, uh, as a future feature than, than for the existing one. And uh, we are going to deliver bridges and bonds in the next release. But that's mean that means that will be the first release with bridges. And that means it's maybe better to wait for another before actually starting using it. Uh, yes, yes, it should work with a problem. Uh, we actually had quite, uh, quite a lot of coding. Uh, the other guys uh, were a little bit deep deep in the coding so that did not read the mailing list. So uh, at one time, we had two implementations for bridges. So if you ask me what works and what doesn't, I, I don't even remember what, what I tested. Uh, but uh, before we release, which should be probably, uh, probably uh, during February, uh, I will go through some tests uh, too. And then Williams promised to do all the testing, but, but I, I will do some tests on my own to make sure that it works even for me. Because uh, very often I see things that work for uh, the person who wrote it, but it doesn't work for me. Uh, and I tend to make such tests that, that, <laughs> that it doesn't work. I, I, I don't know how, how I do that. But I'm always uh, thinking I'm doing it uh, the easiest way and doesn't work, so, so I'm quite crazy then looking at stuff that's written down that must work, and yeah, so yes, yes. Uh, we had um, 
quite a lot of changes because of regis and bonds uh, in the core network manager code uh, as uh, these are very very different from the types of uh, interfaces we had already working well and in future we plan uh, team driver integration but that's really really just planning yes. and the only uh, public interface for plugins we have is uh, VPN. And there are several of them. Um, it tends to work uh, quite well with some exceptions like uh, like uh, automatic connection, but we'll get back to it. We also have uh, connection sh sharing, which is the ma most hated feature on the laptops and desktops by the local network administrators uh, so it's it's uh, maybe sort of w w windows like connection sharing you just have ipv4 we use uh, mask reading we cur currently uh, set up a specific prefix you cannot cannot change uh, the addresses if i did not miss something in, in the code uh, but recently uh, we added uh, support for uh, it's not easier yeah uh, for hotspot mode for Wi-Fi we already support it uh, ad hoc so for some use cases when you have laptops and phones and stuff uh, it's actually pretty easy uh, we are still talking about uh, how to support IPv6 because uh, IPv6 uh, masquerade is something that does not really appeal us and uh, we don't know yet actually if if you uh, if anyone wants to join the discussion uh, there's a bugzilla issue for that or you can write to the mailing list we don't yet know what what we'll actually do there are some current problems that uh, we are trying to uh, address uh, some of the network types uh, or some of the interface types uh, are not able to connect, uh, for example, at uh, at the booting time or at network manager starting time. Uh, some of them would be expected to connect uh, when it's possible. For example, v VPN, you don't want to uh, have the VPN connected when you have no physical connectivity. So we would like to, yeah, we, we had a long talk or long argument with them about this but currently uh, what we support is uh, linking a VPN to a uh, physical connection so we can choose choose a physical connection uh, or more more precisely uh, you take your physical connection and choose a VPN that it should use a network manager will not even announce it as connected unless uh, the VPN succeeds Yeah, I made some changes to the configuration format that's uh, unfortunately uh, not documented. So when I wanted to try static IPv6 configuration, I <laughs> saw some examples on IPv4, so I tried the same, it, it did not work. So now at least uh, it works sort of naturally, but we need, we need to have some documentation later. Uh, we dropped support for DH client uh, three because it's pretty old. It doesn't do IPv6, and we did not did not want to cope with that. Um, we are trying to we we were trying to make sure that bridging and bonding works well with dynamic configuration, which is uh, sort of something you would uh, expect, but it needed some uh, code changes uh, deep in Network Manager and. Uh, we can do some IPv6. It works in in uh, any simple networks, including the ACP. But still, uh, IPv6 is uh, so so more complicated that uh, we don't uh, support it perfectly. Uh, the DNS part is uh, mostly about uh, split split DNS scenarios where you want uh, 
some uh, queries to go through one network to one set of name servers and to another. I'll uh, try to shorten some of the slides now uh, so as uh, we finish in time. And uh, uh, I was uh, personally working on uh, NM platform, which is a, a new component in Network Manager that would uh, handle all uh, all network configuration through kernel. We are doing this uh, throughout uh, all the network manager code currently, and it's uh, it's not even testable by manual tests or something. But what I want to achieve is uh, to be able to run automatic tests. Currently, uh, I can do tests for the platform code itself, and with that, I find like two kernel bugs already, and three libanel bugs. So I'm filing filing those and. Uh, it's a pretty good tool for me, but uh, what's uh, what's the intent uh, is to uh, be able to test the internal network manager behavior without actually configuring any uh, hardware interfaces or something. Uh, to put it simply, to put it simple, uh, put some tests in, make check, and run them uh, with any user without access to uh, to the actual configuration. <coughs> we are going uh, in Fedora uh, to probably put Network Manager into initramfs when we need, uh, need networking uh, features. We actually realized uh, that uh, it does not have uh, so many dependencies. It could be better, but uh, it's not a priority now. Uh, the only thing we want to do is uh, support private dbus, which means just use the library for communication and not use the daemon, because that's really, r running a dbus daemon is, is really currently not necessary for any TRAMFS, so we want to avoid it. We want to support uh, runtime configuration, so that you can just configure uh, some bridges or something. Uh, it would work uh, as an API for uh, virtualization tools and so on. Uh, and we want to uh, pick runtime configuration uh, from, from what's configured before Network Manager is started. It's, for example, good when you have Network Manager in your initramfs, so that uh, it's then started again uh, in the real system and it should uh, Take take over the existing connections uh, the best uh, it can. So there's a bunch of uh, uh, things we are working with. It's uh, it's a kernel. Uh, you can then read uh, read the lists. But uh, actually, better than looking at the slides is maybe then open the networking slash bugs in on Fedora Wiki. And there's there's a bunch of uh, things we need to uh, improve in the kernel. I'm working on problems with get address info in uh, glibc, which does not directly affect uh, network manager, but uh, it directly affects uh, our users. And uh, I realized that uh, except uh, the most common use cases, like yes, I have IPv4 computer connected all the time. Uh, I get the desk info can often uh, give really stupid results and not even resolve localhost and stuff. So it's 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 quite quite horrible. Uh, Daniel M supported WiMAX tools uh, to Libanel three as. Uh, as we are using Network Manager currently, also linked to Libanon 3, to avoid some crashes and problems. Uh, distributions are uh, advised to use the new Vimex tools from then. You can look later at this list of standards we would like to update because some of the problems are not only in the implementations but uh, in, in the specifications themselves. And uh, at the very end, I would like to ask anyone interested in this area 
to talk with us, to help us with Network Manager, to help us with any other projects we depend on, um, for example, DH Client or various tools, uh, Libanel. There's lots of stuff we can, we can use. And there are some contacts uh, you can use. Uh, on this address, you will find the slides. It's not current version, I'll push it today. So thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? From what I get, uh, Network Manager is a helpful tool on clients, but many distributions are shipping Network Manager also for server setups. I'm still lacking to see the benefit for a server configuration because you are adding much overhead for, well, a static configuration. So what's the current point of Network Manager versus servers? Uh, I would like to ask uh, what sort of overhead uh, you actually mean. Well, actually, Network Manager is mm, something like another abstraction layer. Yes. Um, at a server, well, the IP addresses or bonding or whatever is set up when I boot the machine or maybe if I reconfigure it, but I don't have flexible stuff like uh, connecting a VPN or maybe I have that, but um, wireless network or something like that. Uh, actually, um I know many, many uh, server administrators are just happy with uh, any static configuration. And you can just uh, use what I said uh, at the very beginning. You can just use uh, IP command to set up all the stuff and put it in, in a script. Uh, but uh, I'm doing also other stuff with servers. I'm sometimes doing uh, stuff like taking a server that is configured with the ACP, bringing it to another location. It gets another address I can access it immediately. So that's something um, you might ne not need, actually, uh, but there's lots of uh, stuff we can provide to server administration centers that are just uh, convenient, like, for example, the ACP, so that you can move the server, so that you can change the IP address uh, from, uh, from the network equipment side instead of, uh, of uh, the server side. Okay, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, one thing maybe for the future, ever consider to integrate the network manager features into systemd directly? Uh, I'm not working on systemd, so I have uh, no uh, no. Yeah, but it would be a that. good point because systemd is anyway running and nearly covering anything these days. It replaces cron and whatever, so it would be a good uh, point to, to scratch into that. Just from a from another perspective. Yeah, I, I think I think you would no, have to no, ask Lenart or. No, that's a serious point because network manager is uh, scratching into that. Um, it could be used for that. Especially if it comes to the dynamic stuff. If an interface comes up, starting services, that's actually what net network ma uh, what what system is uh, already doing these days. Uh, for example, if you connect a Bluetooth device. Uh, system D starts services related to that. So if um, you plug in a network, System D also could um, uh, uh, handle that together with the network. Uh, so uh, why should. <laughs> what you mean is that uh, System D needs to be able to start uh, network related services and network manager services, but it doesn't mean it has to be the same software. And since systemd is already very modular, there is no point in, uh, in adding functionality to it uh, if it's not related to, to the init system. So an another comment to the same topic, probably? Uh, well, no, I, I'll go back to the server, because in your presentation, you said the most hated uh, feature of a Linux system for network admins was uh, connection sharing. Well, well, in the server space, it's uh, not uh, that. The most hated feature of Linux systems is that uh, uh, they tend to pick an outbound uh, interface which is not the one uh, the network administrator expects. You got uh, some connection going to the server, 
So you, you're trying to debug uh, what's happening, and then the Linux systems decide to send the answer through another physical address. Uh, when, uh, uh, when you do bonding, well, you, for reliability, you s tell your server, well, here is uh, my main interface, and because I don't want downtime, here is another one you can use if the main one is down. Except Linux, when the main interface goes down, it decides, well, I switch to the, the backup interface, but I never go back myself. So uh, after one downtime, suddenly uh, the, your server is only using the backup interface. So if in Network Manager you can uh, put some uh, smart, so really if your, uh, your server should try to send answers on the interface where they re received the request, and uh, uh, even when there is all kind of uh, uh, dynamic uh, backups and uh, switching, uh, go back to the original configuration as soon as possible. That would make s server people love Network Manager. Uh, I, I'm still not sure whether I understood the question, but uh, I, I maybe uh, someone uh, can really server people like static configuration, but not in the sense that uh, things uh, never move when there are problems. In the sense they really want the server to go back to the initial configuration as soon as possible. Uh, they, 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 to to they what, what initial configuration? So if if you change uh, something because yeah. the main path w is down, as soon as the main path is up again, you should go back to the main path, even if the backup path is mm. working. But uh, from management point of view, it's horrible to see uh, Linux uh, server switching all the time and you never know in what state exactly they are. Uh, actually this uh, looks like uh, maybe two separate questions. So one is one is about well, uh, it, it, the, it, it, the it's bonding. Just, it's just a general principle. It's yeah. uh, in uh, many different layers of the networking uh, tools, yeah, yeah, but yeah, the yeah, end okay. result is uh, uh, on uh, another kind of server, Windows or uh, Unix or whatever, uh, they get uh, predictable uh, responses. On a, on a Linux systems, packets tend to go anywhere. Uh, as yeah, uh, sometimes, as yes, yes. As, yes, as yes, soon correct. as the Linux yeah. systems uh, see some routing, well, it, it will send packets. It, it won't uh, try to send them where uh, the human administrators expect them to go. Just anything that works, uh, it will use it. Yeah, yeah, it it uh, happens, uh, but this is this is uh, I think more about the kernel part and uh, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, you may experience this with network manager uh, itself, uh, whether it chooses uh, some connection or another. But usually, I if you're using servers, uh, you'll be using uh, probably bonding interface for a failover. And uh, yeah, if if you have some questions uh, about bonding or some some uh, things that should be fixed in bonding uh, first probably I think I think uh, the kernel people will be more happy to do this with teaming and we don't did support it so it's it's sort of um, hard for me to, to answer things related to this because uh, First, all all the people that I'm talking with about uh, bonding and teaming tell well, tell me that question? yes, we yeah, really yeah. need to switch to the not new the one, question. and I don't yet understand the new one, and not not even very well the old one. So I, I'm looking at it from uh, the configuration point of view, and uh, I can't really answer this. Sorry. Uh, the last question. Uh, the thing I'm really missing about Network Manager is proper command line interface like NMCLI is very, very poor and when I'm going to use it at server, I would expect uh, something more. Yes, yes, that's the same for me. Uh, I'm not uh, working much on uh, NMCLI, it's, uh, it's, it's IRCA. 
and he, he's quite uh, quick to fix stuff that is uh, reported. So uh, I think the, the main thing we need is to report, not that uh, NMCLI sucks, that doesn't help much, uh, but the actual problems, the, the actual um, requests, what, what you need from it. So yes, yes, this is, this is a big problem. I'm going to file a bunch of uh, bug reports myself. I did it in, in, in the past already. Um, but we need more people to either file new bugs or comment on, on the existing ones. Right, that's it. Other questions outside, please? Thank you very much. Thank you.